This video is sponsored by Grammarly. If I make this video, I'll be deeper in computer science YouTube. I want to do lifestyle vlogs, but this video, everyone asked for it. Would I be ruining my channel for my audience that aren't engineers? Computer science videos though, they always do well and they could help people. Well, maybe just this once, I'll post this computer science video and after this, I'll post vlogs again. So in the summer of 2015, I graduated from high school in Guam and made my way to campus at Boston University. I chose my major of computer science without actually knowing anything about coding at the time. For two weeks before, I maybe did a couple of like online coding tutorials, but I was very much a beginner when I got to campus. It was a pretty crazy transition moving to Boston from Guam because Guam is a super small island. It can feel like a small bubble at times, which is why I was just super excited to move to the East Coast, move somewhere new, and start this new chapter in my life. So for my first semester, at BU, I only enrolled into one CS class, Intro to Computer Science 1. And they teach all the fundamentals of programming, all taught in Python, you know, how to write functions, for loops. It was also somewhat of a weeder class because I know so many people that took this major and ended up dropping out because this class was too hard. I do remember this class being challenging because we would have these weekly problem sets that I remember would take like 10 hours a week to finish. But I do remember really enjoying the problem sets. It was then I realized I think I made a great choice on computer science and I decided to stick with that major until I graduated college. I ended up getting a B plus in that class and I also took three other classes. Intro to philosophy, social psychology, and a required writing class. In terms of grades, I always considered myself very average achiever. Most of my grades in college were in the B, B plus region, but obviously school is the most important thing, which is why I want you guys to be prepared with tools like Grammarly, and they're also the sponsor of today's video. If you're a college student, you need to download Grammarly. With midterms and exams coming up, Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that helps you save time and improve productivity. Grammarly is free to download and easy to integrate in your daily life as a browser extension. I've been using Grammarly for a couple months now and honestly it's had my back for all my day-to-day -day writing. Whether it be going on Google Docs or writing emails, Grammarly has quickly become an essential tool in my life. Grammarly works with you beyond grammar and spell checking though because they also have additional cool features that you can use. I'd recommend checking out their setting goal feature where you can specify your audience, tone, formality, and Grammarly will tailor their writing suggestions based on your goals. Grammarly also has a free word count feature on the Grammarly editor to help you save time knowing if you meet your paper requirements. And last but not least, vocabulary it can be hard, which is why they offer a free synonym feature to help you replace your overused words. So with midterms and assignments piling up, succeed in school with tools like Grammarly. It's free, so why not? Go to Grammarly.com slash JedCal to sign up for a free account. And if you'd like to get extra features, upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off to help you save time and work more efficiently. Thank you to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Okay, so freshman spring, I took two computer science classes. In 112, we learned Java and data structures. Data structures like binary trees, stacks, these are all things that are frequently tested in algorithm interviews, which is why I wish I paid a little more attention to that class. And CS131 was a class that was more focused on math, so not really much programming there, but we did learn how to analyze algorithms with big O notation. And I got a B minus. And then I also took Intro to Astronomy and another required writing class. Okay, so now we're entering sophomore year. Sophomore year was the year I started to branch out and try new things. I joined the Boston University Taekwondo team. And at that time, I was already really competitive with Taekwondo back in Guam in high school. So I joined the BU men's A team in these collegiate tournaments. I also joined BU's Filipino club. And I joined that because I am Filipino. And also the demographic of Guam is also almost a third Filipino. Um, this was just my way of not getting homesick. Sophomore year was also the time where I started to really get into photography. At the time, I had a Canon 70D. Okay, so sophomore fall, I took two CS classes, algebraic algorithms and probability in computing. Now these were very math based classes. I hardly did any programming. I would say most of the classes that I took in my undergrad are very theoretical and math based and hardly any hands on programming. I would say hardly any of the information that we actually learn in classes are used like day to day in my job or any other software engineering job. And I guess they just want us to have a stronger foundation in computer science principles and like to think analytically. Well, I don't know, like most of the actual coding work and the frameworks that I use post-grad are all stuff that I just learned online on my own. Would I have been able to learn these things as easily without the computer science degree? I don't know. I still would not regret any of the choices I made. Okay, so sophomore spring, I took three CS courses this time, geometric 
algorithms, computer systems, and introduction to algorithms. Okay, so CS132 was more math, CS210 was computer systems, and this was more about the inner structure of computer systems, like assembly language, pretty much stuff that I would never ever touch. But CS330 was a really good class, and in terms of real life application, I feel like this is the most important class because it's the most similar to algorithm interviews that interviews give us. Now it takes us to junior year. Junior year was a time when I started to really think about postgraduate life. My resume was really sad at the time. My only job experience was working for the IT department in my college, which just meant I would deliver microphones to professors and they would call me when they need help setting up the projectors. Essentially, I had no program experience in terms of a job. What I did do to beef up my resume was I made these HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript websites. One of them was my personal portfolio where I just made like an online version of a resume. And I used those two to get my first internship. It was a startup founded by a BU alumni. He hired me as a front-end developer where all I did was HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript like animations. I took that internship for the fall of my junior year. It was about 10 hours a week and it was unpaid. Actually, the contract said that I would make $100 every week that the company makes money. I got $200 that whole semester. I really didn't care. I was there for 10 hours a week, just working. I was just so happy to have front-end developer on my resume. In terms of schoolwork, this was the semester where I took two of the hardest classes, Computer Systems Fundamentals, which I got a C plus in, and that was also more like inner system memory stuff, and cryptography, and was just really heavy math that I was honestly lost the whole semester. Move on to spring 2018. First one was Applications Programming. Totally forgot what that class was about. I also took CS320, Concept of Programming Languages. And in this class, it was more about how to create a programming language and we actually had to make our own computer language where certain things map to certain things and I thought that was a really cool class. I got a B plus in it. Okay, so for CS411, it was called Software Engineering and we were put into groups and we had to create a web app using a public API. We got the Twitter API. <laughs> where you have to sign into this web app. It's a quiz of 10 questions and each question will show a tweet that I grabbed from the Twitter API randomly and it'll show four Twitter profile pictures of four of the people you follow and you had to guess who said what. And, and that was our project. I got a B plus in my class. So this was my junior spring and it was also the year where everyone needed to get a summer internship right before senior year. I applied to like 100 internships. I got one offer for a company in New York City. I spent 10 weeks in New York City in an NYU dorm and in my internship I had three other co-interns. They didn't ask us to touch any of the actual production code. They just told us to work on a personal project and at the end of the 10 weeks, we would present it to the whole company. My project at the end of the 10 weeks was related to the data team. It was like creating some data visualization. I honestly cannot even tell you, but I got really good at SQL that summer. Those 10 weeks I was in New York City was also the time where I started getting into making travel videos and I found a brand new passion. It was actually a really good summer because I was just going around New York City, taking videos, taking photos. I started posting a little bit on YouTube, not vlogging. I was just posting cinematic content. Okay, so now we are in senior year. I now have two internship experiences in my resume. I felt a little bit more confident about going into full-time work. I took a databases class, which was all in SQL, which is literally everything I did in my internship. So that class was really easy. Data mining and Spanish. The data mining class, I got a C in. I, I, I don't remember what I learned there, but I must have not done well. I do remember senior year was the year I really started slacking off. It was like my senioritis, where I would just hang out with friends and I was really going around Boston taking a lot of photos and videos. By the time it came to senior spring, I had taken all the required CS courses I needed for a major. So I just needed four classes that are in the College of Arts and Sciences to, to graduate. So I took Anthropology, fourth semester Spanish, Intro to Philosophy, and then I took CS 101, which is a CS class intro for non-major. Majors. This is a little bit nostalgic looking back at all this, but it's kind of crazy how <laughs> extremely average all my grades were. But anyway, this is actually one of my most frequently requested videos to make, and I probably won't do a sit down video and talk about coding for a while, so I'll see you guys next week with another vlog.